Hospice Chaplain Eugenie. She's been a longtime visitor of the Eastern Shore and she finally permanently landed here in 2008. She serves as the College Chaplain and Director of Christian Formation. Pre she previously served in Montana. She's a certified health care chaplain serving both at Talbot Hospice and on the palliative care team at Shore Regional Health. And her cat is 21 years old this week. <laughs> That's amazing. Next week, I'm sorry, happy birthday kitty. She's gonna talk about the hospice chaplain role, which is a pivotal role and such a resource to have. Um, hi, I'm um, welcome to you all. I'm, um, as um, Lauren said, I'm a chaplain for Talbot Hospice. And um, I appreciate everything that Sharon shared because the social workers are are very important to whether it be palliative care or hospice care. And um, I work with some really dynamite ladies, so I don't work with Sharon, but um, anyway, they're very important people and get to know them. So um, I'm talking about the role of a chaplain. So um, since hospice overall, whether it's, doesn't matter who, which hospice foundation you're talking about, we're about the whole person. Um, and as chaplains, we take care of that spirit that, that core of yourself that helps you to understand who you are as a human being. And, um, and for our role as a hospice, or as a chaplain, it is to meet that person wherever you are. So it doesn't matter what church I go to, it doesn't matter you know, what my education is or, or anything, I wanna hear about your life. I wanna sit there and, and listen to you it's my favorite it's always been my favorite thing to do so this is a perfect job for me it just took me a long time to find it but i want to hear about your life i want to hear about your kids your grandchildren you know how um if you've got a significant other i want to know what your relationships like all the things that you've done um how you spent your vacations how you um you have found joy where, where was the joy in your life and then also listen to those times where maybe they're, that weren't so joyful. And um, some of us don't, when there's not some joy, we kind of stuff it down inside of us and it doesn't get to heal. So um, as a chaplain, I want to sit there and, and hold your hand while you're, explain, you're telling me about those things. I want to be a presence. And I'm not necessarily going to talk because we often say a chaplain's job is a ministry of presence because what we're really doing is just being with you on your journey and walking side by side as, um, as the other staff, you know, help you through whatever it is that you wanna, that one last thing that Sharon talked about that you wanna do before, um, before that day, before. Um, and also a chaplain isn't about religion. It's about, like I said, it's about your spirit. So it doesn't matter if you went to church or not. You, we are all still have a spiritual being within ourselves. And that's the person that I want to get to know. Um, yeah, I'm really involved with my church and I have been for a long time because I sing in the choir. But yet my spirit is standing on the, on the mountaintop in Montana, ready to go down the hill um, on my skis. Or it's standing in the Madison River with a fly rod in my hand and casting out to a fish that maybe I can see him and maybe I can't. Um, but so that's part of where I find where I connect with God. I also connect with him over coffee. I connect with him, you know, when I'm singing, you know, and other things. But um, so we each have our, our own little thing. It could be weeding in the garden. It could be... Um, um, See, I'm, I'm, anyway, um, it could be doing any, any number of things where you find your own peace and you find um, restorative, being restored to what, um, what perhaps is maybe you're struggling with, but you go to that one place and, and then you feel restored so that you can move forward and, and tackle whatever is next. Um, so um, I, I think I, I feel like I have a really fun job because it's getting to know all these really neat, cool people that have so much to offer when they share their lives. 
and um, my job is to listen. And and if there's a stumbling block, well, help un unearth it with you. Um, not have you sit there and struggle with it by yourself. Sometimes it's, you know, in talking with a family um, along with a social worker so that um, unresolved issues amongst families can, can help. We can smooth the path for resolution to happen so that when, um, when we or our loved ones um, do come to that end, that they go in peace to know that all is good with their family, they're, they are in a right place and, um, you know, everything is, is good and, and it feels right both in time and place. So thanks. I'd like to hear a little bit about the other person, the caregiver. How does yes. each of you deal with the caregiver person? I should have emphasized that we're not only there just for the patients, but for the family too. Especially when the fam when the first patient isn't responsive anymore, or um, or just has difficulty speaking. Um, I, it's uh, I've spent a number of out number of m amount of time with um, families or children or cousins or whoever it is that that has a relationship with this person. I want to start and create a relationship with the other person because it's all about the bigger picture of the story. So when we when we say it's a patient-centered um, approach, it really includes the family as well. So and what to whatever that extent means. Thank you.